Hi, it's Sherry from A Quilting Life, and I'm here today to talk about the Quilting Life Planner and Workbook. This is going to be a monthly series of videos on the first Monday of each month. And because it is the first Monday in January, I just want to say Happy New Year. I uh, hope you had a wonderful celebration over the weekend in your part of the world, wherever you are. And I also want to say thank you. We have just uh, reached 60,000 subscribers on the channel. So thank you to all of you who have watched and listened and subscribed to our channel. We appreciate it uh, so much. Okay, we're going to dig into some things with this planner. We're going to, as I mentioned, be doing this every month. And I'm also going to give you some options later in today's video for sending me back some feedback for these videos. So uh, that'll be at the end. I'll let you know about that and let's just get started. Okay, let's get started. It is January and it's time for all things organization, as I mentioned. First, I just wanted to show you an option if you are feeling like you wanna put some tabs in your planner. This is actually something that I thought of, but I didn't, I was so worried about the production costs and all of the planners that I've seen that have tabs are up in the $50 price range and we really wanted to keep this below $30. So we did not add the tabs, but I just added this one. I had it turn right to the first monthly calendar page and it works really well. This one is, and I will link all of these, but these are the Avery Ultra Tabs. They are two-sided, they are writable, they are smudge-free, and they also have really narrow sections right here, and it's sheer, so you can't tell that I've covered that up with the tab. So I'm going to finish adding these, and I'm going to put them on my calendar pages so that I can turn to those you might want to turn use them more sparingly for other sections that you use more frequently, maybe works in progress or bucket list or uh, notions or patterns. Any, any of the other pages that you refer to frequently, you can customize with these tabs. I also have, and I'll find out what how these are different. These are also little tabs. I feel like they're not as sturdy as this one, but they are smaller and they come in different colors too. And then there were also these, uh, and they're called durable filing tabs. So they have a similar feel to these, but they're smaller. So if you were gonna put maybe 12 different tabs in, maybe you would want to go smaller or you could even put more. So I will link these different options. This is made by Post-It, this one's by Avery, and this one I'm not sure, but I'll try, to, <laughs> I'll try to find this one and link it as well. But I did have a couple questions about that, and, and as I mentioned, I had already thought about that as well too. So I uh, just wanted to start off with that. Okay, so January is the month of reflection, and this month we are going to be filling out the first section of the planner if you haven't done it already. And also I just wanna mention here, if you haven't watched the, the kind of intro video that we did in December, go back and watch that one first. It gives you kind of an overview of things that you can do before you get started in the planner. But if you haven't done any of that, watch that video and do that. And uh, for January, we're gonna start with reflection. And I've got a lot of different reflection exercises here for you. You're going to want to think about, and I know sometimes people think it's such a waste of time for this, but it really is helpful. And as I've been reading more organizational psychology books and organizing books, it, there really is a benefit to doing some reflection. What were your favorite finishes over the past year? A week or month. Think about what projects you finished in 2021 that really spoke to you. And just take a little bit of time and list those, write them down, even if it's a quick shorthand list. The next section is, why do you love the finishes that you listed up here? Was it the process? Was it the finished product? What part of that process made you love that project? 
I have realized from my own sewing that it is the scrappy projects that have really spoken to me. And so I just really want to make sure that I do more scrappy projects. Even if it's just scrappy from one designer, those speak to me a lot more than just using one collection. Over on the next page, what kind of projects do you want to do more of in the coming year? Just think about what it, what is what is something you really want to get done in 2022. And spend some time thinking about the projects you didn't love as much. This is just all a reflection section. So just take the time and fill this out. Even if it's just quick shorthand notes, I feel like it will be beneficial to you in the future. Okay, and then also for January, we have a little bit of reflection on your organizational systems. We're really going to dig into organizing throughout this year. And I feel like it's sort of like how to eat an elephant. You have to do it one bite at a time. And the first step is to write down what kind of systems you have in place now regarding your quilting and your sewing, what works well for you. Some, some things work well for one person and another person would not find that helpful at all. So personalize this for your quilting systems that you already have in place. And also on the lower half of the page, we have kind of the home-based systems that you have in place. And that would include menu planning, cleaning, mail, paper tracking, calendaring, everything else with your home. And just kind of write down what you have in place, what works, what doesn't. And this will help us as we go through the years and kind of solidify finding out what works best for you. I have found that Whenever I think of something, if I just write it down, it helps me a lot in my planning. I actually do planning once a week, I, and it really only takes 30 to 40 minutes. I sit down, I go over, every, I list everything that I accomplished the week before, and then I go over my task list, figure out what I'm going to do in the week ahead, and I make sure that I do this for personal projects and for work projects and for my home and family. I've been doing it for almost, let's see, about a year and a half now, and it has been really, really helpful. So that's why I wanted to start out the planner with these reflection sections. Uh, also go through, if you haven't already, add the dates to your calendar and anything that you need to. Schedule time for your sewing. That really works for me. I just know that on Saturdays, if I'm home, I'm going to come in my sewing room for at least two to three hours and either organize or clean or sew or even cut out things to work on later in the week. So those are your January tasks to do. You can also, as I mentioned in the December video, you can also continue to fill out your works in progress pages and your bucket list pages. Those are things that you can work on year round. But really start with this. And then next month in February, we'll be moving on to the next section, which is all about lists. You're going to be making a lot of lists. If you have time this month, you can even kind of skip ahead and look at that. But we will be talking about the power of lists and whether you use the planner or a digital list on your phone or a combination of both, we will talk about all of those different kind of methods that you can use. I hope that if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments, either on the video or the blog post. And ne beginning next month, we will take time and answer any of those questions. Uh, I'll group them into like categories and do kind of a Q&A at the start of the monthly videos from now on. So leave those questions in the video or in the comment section on the video here on YouTube or in the blog post and I will compile them and we'll spend a little bit of time each month answering those questions. Okay, that's it for today's video. I hope that you will enjoy using the planner this month. And as I mentioned earlier, be sure to leave those questions either here in the comments or also on the blog post. You can leave comments on my blog. So we'll get those compiled and get them answered for you in the February video. 
If you enjoyed today's video, please share it with a friend. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Hit the like button and thanks so much for stopping by.